Helmut Kohl, a European patriot. No one did more to serve the cause of German unification and European unity. But he also caused a deep rift within his political party. A politician who'd put down deep roots in his home region, Rheinland-Pfalz. Local residents recall that Kohl was friendly and approachable. But his family relationships were troubled. His legacy, a mix of political triumph and personal tragedy. This is Marbacher Straße in the city of Ludwigshafen. This house, number 11, was for decades the home of the Kohl family. Now people come here to pay their respects and express their gratitude for all the work that Kohl did throughout his political life. Kohl lived here for more than 40 years, an outstanding European politician who was also very much at home in a small German city. These neighbors, Robert and Marian Zinser, live two doors down. The Zinsers recall that Kohl was always approachable and down to earth, even after he'd become a successful politician. He introduced himself to us right after he moved in. It was a Sunday, I think. He called up and said, this is Helmut Kohl, one of your neighbors. Can I come over and say hello? We said, fine. Do you mean right now? He answered, sure, right now. And then a few minutes later, there he was with his wife, Hannelore. Helmut Kohl, a true son of the Pfalz region. Robert Sinser says that Kohl wasn't just play acting either. He was an unusual politician in that regard. I've lived a long time, and I've seen a lot of media coverage of politicians. Kohl was the only one who kept a common touch with people. It's a gift, and he was born with it. And throughout his political career, he used that common touch to his advantage. Zinser is retired now, after a long career with the chemical giant BASF. The company's industrial complex, located in Ludwigshafen, is the largest of its kind in the world. For decades, the city was a stronghold of the Social Democrats. Helmut Kohl got his start in politics there. City councilman Heinrich Jöckel says Kohl knew how to build a support network. And he made use of this skill later as German chancellor. He really knew how to get along with people when it came to political work. He kept all the details in his head. He didn't need to write it down in a notebook. He was always like that. And then later, when I got into politics and became a local party official, I'd meet him at various events. And I was always amazed that he remembered my name. He knew who you were and what you did, and it made me feel great. Cole knew how to treat people, even in the early days of his career. And as chancellor, he stayed in close contact with local politicians to make sure that his power base remained solid. This is the Deidesheimerhof Hotel, located about 20 kilometers southwest of Ludwigshafen. This restaurant table, next to the green tiled stove, was the Kohl's favorite. Kohl entertained heads of state and government here, including Margaret Thatcher, Jacques Chirac, and Mikhail Gorbachev. They dined on Kohl's favorite local dish, stuffed pig stomach. Kohl also hosted Russian President Boris Yeltsin here. These demonstrations of provincial behavior were often ridiculed by some, particularly politicians on the left. Kohl was sometimes caricatured as a pair, but he remained true to his down-to-earth nature. 
He exemplified the affability of the Pfalz region, not the austerity of Prussia. It was a talent that helped Kohl to ease European concerns about German plans for unification. Even today, the residents of Deidesheim are proud of this local boy who made good. When you hear us talk, you hear the voice of Helmut Kohl. Deidesheim has a good reputation, and we plan to keep it. <laughs> the state of Rheinland-Pfalz borders France. Kohl was acutely aware of the region's history and was convinced that the destruction and bloodshed of two world wars must never be repeated. Kohl's gesture of reconciliation with French President François Mitterrand at the Verdun Memorial was intended to show that France had nothing to fear from Germany. Kohl managed to convince Gorbachev and the other leaders that Germany would never forget its historical guilt. In fact, he took personal responsibility for it, and this helped to ease concerns about German reunification. Kohl's greatest political achievement was to create a united Germany. It became his political legacy. The Christian Democrats have governed Ludwigshafen for several years now. Mayor Eva Loza defends Helmut Kohl, despite his role in a party financing scandal in the 1990s. Loza says this was an unfortunate chapter in CDU history, but it's over now. It was a huge problem. It's not an easy situation to assess even today. But I think it's important to admit that mistakes were made. Still, he did a lot of good work, and I think that outweighs the negatives. Cole never revealed the names of those who made secret donations to the party, and it cast a shadow over his political legacy. There were also problems in Cole's personal life. Cole and his wife, Hannelore, were married for more than 40 years. They had two sons, Walter and Peter. They were a model German family, at least in public. But this image was false. The details started to come out after Cole's wife died in 2001, an apparent suicide. Cole remarried in 2008, he was 78 and in poor health. Critics claim that Cole's new wife was shielding him from the public. Cole also had had little contact with his sons. After Helmut Cole died, his son Walter wanted to pay his last respects, but was not allowed into the family home. And he had heard about his father's death in a radio news report. <laughs> I think it's a shame that I was not allowed to do what I was obligated to do. I tried in various ways, but it didn't work out. That's the way it is. So now I'll visit my mother's grave, it's not far from here, and say some prayers. This is the Kohl family gravesite in Ludwigshafen. Hannelore is buried here, but Helmut Kohl is to be interred in the city of Speyer, about 25 kilometers south of Ludwigshafen. That did not go down well with many residents of Kohl's hometown. Well, what can I say? I don't think that's what he really wanted. We can't understand it. His wife is buried here, and so are his parents and grandparents. The family gravesite is there, and the headstones, so he could be buried there, if that's what he wanted. He remarried. I can't comment on that, but I cannot believe that Helmut Kohl would have wanted to be buried in Speyer instead of Ludwigshafen. Former police chief inspector Bernd Nachtigall agrees. He was part of the Kohl family's security detail for years, 
and even drove Cole's sons to school. If that's what he said in his last will and testament, then so be it. But I have my doubts. I think his second wife didn't want him to be buried here, where he belongs. This is the Speyer Cathedral. Kings and emperors have been buried here since the Middle Ages. Helmut Kohl believed that the cathedral represented the Christian origins of Europe. He often welcomed foreign heads of state and government here. So Kohl's final resting place will be in a Speyer cemetery. There are about 50 graves there, most of them for priests. The site of Cole's grave, near a small park, will be open to the public. The city of Speyer says it will cover the cost of maintaining Cole's grave. Yeah, he visited Speyer often, and he always got a warm welcome from the people. And he often invited important politicians to ceremonies at the cathedral. Ah, uh, they just want more tourists to come to Speyer. He came to Speyer often and had a lot of connections here, and with the state of Rhineland-Pfalz in general. So I think it's fine that he'll be buried here. Though at the end, feeling unappreciated, Helmut Kohl will go down in history as the chancellor who brought about German unification and promoted European unity. But his personal life ended in turmoil and controversy, and that too is part of his legacy.